I'm going to go over some of my favorite debugging techniques for Android and Kotlin. And a couple of these you've seen, but some of them maybe you haven't. And so I'm just going to put them all in one place. In order to do this, I just started a, uh, uh, a little activity called Simple Lambda. And I'm going to do some programming in here. And we are going to take a look at some of the things that I like to do. So let's uh, start out with, you know, um, X, I don't know. So we'll start out with an, an integer. No, let's start out with a, uh, I mean, this doesn't <clears throat> really make sense, but, uh, yeah, we want, let's expand the imports. We want to see these imports. So, okay. So first of all, let's, um, let's start with the imports. So right now we have a list of imports and, uh, I started this with the default setting, which had a snack bar. And in general, these imports can get a little hairy. And so one of the things that's kind of cool and where is it? Is it, uh, up here, this this is one I actually do um, using the keyboard accelerator, but it's optimize imports, Control Alt O, and you see it it briefly shot up there, removed one import. It will make sure all the imports are correct. They are uh, sorted, and there's nothing unused. So that's a a neat feature. Uh, along these lines. Um, if you are, um, uh, I mean, this code is terrible. It's not very Kotlin. -y. Um, uh, let's go into our, I don't want, I don't want to text you. Uh, I'll take a, I'll take a button for 200, please, Bob. And, um, with a little wrap. Oh, come on, man. Wrap content. Height. Oh, what's the problem? Why do you not like me anymore? I thought... I thought... I thought we understood each other. Um, okay, so... Layout height, that's what it should be. I don't know why. Swallow it fly. Okay, and text. Um, uh, come on. Uh, really? Um, So what am I going to do? Uh, I'll, I'll have this do something. So, uh, and what was, did we give this? No, we didn't even give this an ID. Android ID, call it create, call it create but B for button. I've taken to putting the type at the end of my uh, XML objects because it lets me sort of know that they came from XML and this naming convention style is acceptable to Kotlin. Kotlin doesn't like snake case and certain other things. So, yeah, I mean, this is just awful. Yeah, yeah, there we go. And then that added an import. Um, but you know what, let's screw this up, so. Um, Here, I'll do, I'll do this, which hopefully recognize it's not so good. Okay, so next though, I just wanna, oh boy. I just wanted to, what do I wanna do? Yeah, so let's say you've got some, oh, some code. Um, and it's not indented properly. 
And so, um, and this happens a lot when you're cutting and pasting. So we just grab the whole thing and we go up to code and auto indent lines and control alt I. So where I have it bound, that is uh, super useful for me to see what's going on. And the <coughs> compiler is already complaining about this. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's funny, it's actually complaining and it's wrong because it's, it's late in it, but it's buttoned. So by the, the type, it should never be null. So, um, yeah, it's always true. Oh, no, it is right. It will be, uh, oh, no, 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 it'll be null at this point. Yeah, anyway. And then let's do, uh, yeah, set on click listener and see what I wanted to do here was I wanted to say um, now, uh, 10 or something and in here we'll do uh, dot D uh, listening and we'll do yeah that's that uh, string format hmm. good enough uh, put a space there and okay so I am setting an on click listener to this lambda which is uh, you know, the thing that was giving everybody conniptions in the beginning and one thing I am doing that's a little tricky here is I'm capturing this local variable and uh, you know, I think we all know what this code is going to do. So let's run it and get our phone up there. And then oh, we look at build, and it's building, building, building. And there's a warning, but hello. Something, uh, something is slow. Let's try that again. Oop. Process terminated. Um, gosh, process terminated. I was really hoping, really hoping for a backtrace, guys. What, uh, can you help me with that? Why are you not giving me a backtrace? Oh boy, you're making me look bad. Oh, there's a backtrace. Um, oh my gosh, late knit property X has not been initialized. So, okay, so a couple of things that are going on. So first of all, we're seeing uh, in when we when we run, we we often get. Uh, enough output here that it's useful but in this case we have to look in logcat and if something goes wrong uh, we can get a backtrace this is called a stack backtrace it's the state of the stack when we died and it has useful things like a clickable link to the actual line of code which uh, it's actually not even the, the exact right line I don't think um, oh this is has not been initialized and then and then it actually dies. Huh. I don't think it would die here. Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it does die here and it's so smart it tries to point us to the underlying root cause. So, uh, stack backtrace, run. Um, let me see, see what's going on in here. Okay. That I think we've seen that sort of thing, and of course I'm calling log dot d in here, and you know this Android util log is useful. So let's uh, let's not be complete idiots about this, and let's do this, and let's also do. But I'll tell you what, let's do. Um, uh, 
50. So this is a, you know, sometimes for member variables, they prefix them by M, which whatever. I don't like to do that because it just sort of muddies up the names, but some people like to do that. And I'll do that here. And I just want to uh, show you that. So we're going to, you know, we're going to do is we're going to say listening. Then we're going to say, uh, local X and then we're going to say MX and oops D local X MX okay and okay we're going to do that you know we need another let's give ourselves another button uh, constraint layouts be such can be so great until they're a pain. So let's just do linear layout and uh, orientation vertical. And we'll have one button. Uh, let's not call this create. Let's call this log and. Have another button. Uh, wrap, wrap, text, um, plus increment, and give it an ID increment button. And want us to stop the button. Okay, that's good. And what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, create a private function increment x and that is just going to increment our member variable. <coughs> okay. And what we're going to do here is on increment x, oop, uh, no, 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 uh, increment, uh, <laughs> our increment button. We're going to set on click listener, but we are, well, you know what? Let's do this, but instead of this, can we do, oh, it has to take a view, right? So, oh, no, we don't need that. That is a view. And we're going to say, oh boy, what the heck is this? Uh, this is the scoping operator in Kotlin, and it, it identifies this as a um, function pointer, or member function pointer. Let's see, pointer to a member function. So just like in, so in C, there's this operator, uh, address of, which you can use for function pointers, and you actually don't need it for function pointers in C, which is a little confusing. Um, but this is the operator that tells us, hey, uh, look for this as a local function. And so we're setting this on click listener here. We're setting it to a function that is um, defined right there. And here we're setting it to this fun this member function, just like any other function. You know, we could make this a, a global function. It would still, well, wouldn't be able to access this member variable if it were private, but the, you're getting the point. Oh, let's go up here and uh, we're going to do our magic. Boom optimize those uh, imports. So we saw that before. All right, so let's see, uh, let's see what we got here. Oh, has the phone been up this whole time? That's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Okay. So what I'm gonna do run. Looks good. Log cat also looks good. So let's we hit log. All right. So you can see down here, it's, uh, I don't know if I can increase the size of this text. Uh, probably shouldn't be doing this on the fly. This is a little too. Uh, uh, uh. Oh boy. Yeah, this is. A little, a little too much. I just did that, didn't I? Yeah. Okay.
All right. Well, uh, unfortunately, I can't I can't change the text here right now, but um, uh, you know, this is s simple lambda, and I have this uh, d listening, so I can type that in here. This is a regular expression, and uh, I get I get just that output, and you know we hit log. Okay, so now we hit increment, and then we hit log again. Oh my gosh, that's pretty cool, right? Increment log again. This is now, if you look, the locals stays 10, and this one is 52. So what does that mean from in here? I can leave the phone up at, the, at this point. <clears throat> so what this is saying is this, so this guy is um, calling this function, which increments this member variable, and it means that while he or she, this function captured a reference or a copy of this local variable. We don't know which at this point. It definitely captured a reference to this member variable. It did not capture a copy because it's changing as that member variable changes. Now here comes another exciting feature and that is refactor. So at this point I realized that MX is just a bad name. So I go in here and I say refactor, rename. And then I'm in this somewhat weird, um, the way the editing works when this thing is activated is a little weird, but I go to the beginning and I say, uh, you know, I'm gonna change this to member X. That's a little ridiculous, but <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. What the heck is that? Uh, refactor, rename, did it not like Oh, 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 yeah, I didn't like it. So, so check this out. So member X, okay. And then it said, oh, it didn't like that. Why? Because, I don't know, references property would be renamed. Uh, and then there's another, there's dynamic references. Oh, yeah, so basically what it's saying is like, hey, I can uh, change this in all the cases it appears in the code, but it seems like you also had it in the string. Do you really want me to change that here? And I say, yeah, do that refactor. And look at that, even in the string, it changed the name. That is pretty cool. I wish I had planned that, but how fortuitous. So, and it shows you in this in this um, dialog box what's actually going on. So, you know, it, it changed uh, this, what they call a dynamic reference in a string, and then they changed the regular references in the code. So very cool, right? All right, now, um, let's see, let's see. Well, you know what, let's go in here. So let's say I'm in here, and uh, now we're gonna go to another, so it's sort of similar, it's under the refactor, but this is gonna be called find usage. So. I'm here and I'm looking at this button and I'm like, man, where the heck is this button used? So I go and I say, uh, no, actually it's not under refactor, it's under find usages. I say find usages and you, you see a couple of things. So here I knew uh, where this was defined, but it actually shows you where it's defined up here, attribute value is defined and here is where it's used. Increment B. Hey, pretty cool, right? Um, and you know, this works in reverse, find usages if I'm, so get rid of this, if I'm here, and I'm like, man, I don't know where this thing is defined, find usages, boom, it's defined in XML. Yeah, all right, so back and forth to where it's defined and where it's used, and if that's more complicated, it gives you a more complicated uh, output. Okay, I think that is all I'm gonna say about now. So again, uh, part of why I was doing this is just to show you that this Lambda acts like a local function in the sense that it captures a reference to a global variable. Um, it also captures a reference to this local variable, but the local variable then goes out of scope, so it's just sort of holding on to it. And even though this local variable no longer exists because we captured a copy of it, it won't be garbage collected. You know, if you if you know what that means, um, just to I don't know, put a f to put a point on it or something. You know, if we we do this, uh, 
Yeah, now we're not using increment X. Everything is still um, kosher, copacetic, in the sense that let's let's, let's give ourselves a little log cat output. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna log, and then we're gonna increment. And what do we think we're gonna get? Uh, we're gonna get plus ten because we made that increment log up to 70. We changed the definition of set on click listener from calling this increment, which increments it by one, to defining it in line, and that's incrementing it by 10. Okay, but you, the, the point of this again is just to show you that uh, a lambda is an anonymous function that could be defined in line, but it acts just like a regular member function for the I was going to say for the most part, but I, I think completely. Okay, and then, yeah, remember, um, look for the stack backtrace in run or logcat. You can filter the outputs. Uh, you can optimize your imports with one character stroke. You can auto-indent your code. Oh, I, and then I will say... Um, Another thing that I often do is I will capture a bunch of code and then go up here and do, I like comment with block, oh no, god darn it. Uh, undo, I always get confused as to which is which. Uh, comment with line comment. So this comments add a, a bunch of, of code. And if you copy it again and do uh, line comment, it will uncomment it. So, and I, I like the line comment just because it grays out the whole thing and it, I don't know, for some reason I just like that. But if you like block comment, that's, that's fine too. So just um, bear in mind, you can comment out a bunch of code. Okie dokes.